that? Yeah, that's a good idea. Hello, good evening, church. Welcome. It's so wonderful to praise and thank God. We thank you for his presence. Which camera? You're on the top? This screen. Yeah? God is so good, he's so wonderful, he's our loving father, we want to praise him, we want to thank him for his goodness every day, his mercy and his love follows test, us check, every day, every morning, test, check, test. wherever we go, he is with us, you are a loving God, we thank you for your grace which is sufficient, we want to praise you, we want to thank you every moment of our lives because without your grace we would not be here your love is unconditional agape love we worship you we praise you we glorify your name yeah. your name is the highest every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that you are Good evening, church. It's so wonderful to see you all here together to praise and thank God. 
God is such a wonderful God. We love him. We want to serve him. We want to know him better. We want to just sing his praises because he's an awesome God. He's full of love. And we enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise because he dwells in our praises and he loves us as we keep on praising him and thanking him because this is his will that we praise him in every situation. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let us all Glory to praise Jesus. God in one Hallelujah. voice thank and you, thank Jesus. him. Praise you, Lord. You are the King of Kings. Lord. Yes, you Lord. Are you are the mighty God. You are, you are the prayer and the Lord. You, you are thank the holy of all holies. You are the King Glory of kings, Jesus. the loving God, Hallelujah. the you Savior of this world. We lift your name upon our name. We love you, Lord. We adore you. We glorify your name. Thank you, Jesus. We bring sacrifice of praise into the heart of the Lord. what you have done for us in our lives, Lord. You are all worthy of all praise. We thank you that you have given us your grace and your love by believing in your son, Jesus Christ, who died for us and who rose from the dead. And we are his privileged children because we are seated with him at his right hand. Amen. We have dominion. We have authority which you have given us. And for this, we want to praise you. We want to thank you. You have done such marvelous things in our lives, Lord God. There is no end to thank you, to praise you. For every breath that we take, Lord, we want to praise you. We thank you, Lord. You are a God of impossible situations. You healed the blind. You made the deaf hear. You made the lame walk. You made the dead rise. And you have given us that same power, Lord God, to heal the sick to raise the dead. We are so privileged, Lord, to be your children, your children of light. We thank you, Lord God, that your presence is with us every moment because our bodies are the temple of God and you dwell in us and you live in us, Lord. We want to just sing your praises. What 
a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Every Jesus. other name, Lift every your name knee shall Thank bow, you, every Jesus. tongue confess that you are Lord, Thank you are God. Jesus. We love you, we adore, you, Lord, you. We adore you, we adore you. You are the King of Kings, the Lord of the Lords, King of Kings. Yes, the mighty Lord. God, the prayer answering Thank God. You, Lord, Jesus. you are our mighty Father, you, loving Father. Your love is unconditional. You, For this we want to praise you and thank you, Lord. Thank and you, every day is a day to praise you. Every day is a blessed day. This is the day the Lord has made, and every day is a blessed day because we are in you and you are in us, Lord. You are the wine and we are the branches. We worship you. We praise your holy name. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us the authority, Lord, to tread on lions and snakes, fierce lions and poisonous snakes, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, that we are witnesses to, of your love when we reach out, Lord God. You are such an awesome God. Yes, we love you with our whole heart, mind, and soul. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. The Lord has made. We will rejoice. Rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. I'm so glad Jesus set me free. I'm so glad. Set me free, singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus set me free. The devil has no power. Jesus set me free. The devil has no power. Jesus set me free. The devil has no power. Jesus set me free. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus set me free. Alive, alive, alive forever. Jesus is alive, alive, alive forevermore. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. Jesus is alive forevermore. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. Glorify your name. Your name is a name which has to be praised all the more, every day and night. Yes, Lord, we thank you for your grace and your mercy and your goodness which follows us all the days of our life, Lord Jesus. You're such a good God, such a loving God who died for us, 
You freed us from all our sins, all our trespasses, Lord, by dying on that cross, Lord. You took every sin into your, into your body so that we are set free, are forgiven all our sins. We thank you, Lord, and you have healed us from all our diseases, Lord, because by your stripes we are healed. You're such a good God, loving God, Lord, and you have given us authority, Lord. When we went out the other day on the outreach, Lord God, we saw multitudes of people all on the streets, and they were so, like, in, when we reached them, we approached them with Jesus, they were so happy and so overjoyed, and we prayed with them, and we blessed them, and they Amen. were so excited, Amen. and they wanted more and more of Jesus in them. Amen. And uh, we saw a lady who was uh, walking, and she had a limp on her leg, and we went towards her and asked her, can we pray for you? And she was so happy that we reached out to her, and we, she put her legs up, and we prayed, and we said, in the name of Jesus, leg grow, grow, Amen. grow. And this authority which God has given, the leg grew, and she was so happy she could Thank walk you, properly. You, this is the authority God has given us to Thank reach you. out to everybody on the streets, in the Thank homes, you, to tell them the wonderful news of the kingdom of God, Please, that he's alive, he's living, and yes, he's so Lord. good and so merciful that yes, anyone Lord. who comes to him, he, he welcomes with open arms. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord, you're so wonderful. You never yes. look at our background, what yes, we Lord. are, our s bad behavior, our sins, nothing. Yes, you, yes, we Lord. just come to you, and you have forgiven us all our sins by when we believe in you, Lord. You're such a merciful, compassionate God a God who's so good and so wonderful. For this, we want to praise you, glorify you all the days of our life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God is good. God is good all the time. With his brown of praise in this heart of mine, God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine, God is good, God is good. All the time God is good All the time For the song of praise Is the heart of mine God is good All the time For the song of praise Is of mine God is good God is good All the time If you walk through the valley, there are shadows all around. Do not fear, he is with you. He will keep you safe and sound. He has promised to never leave you, not forsake you. And his word is true. We are strong with you. You have provided all our needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. All your promises are yes and amen. 
we thank you that we are the light and the salt of this earth, Lord. That wherever we go, your presence goes with us, Lord. And we want to worship you every day of our life, Lord Jesus. You are the beginning and the end. There's nobody like you. You are an awesome God, an awesome friend too. You will never leave us, never forsake us. We thank you for your blessings, big and small. Your blessings chase us. We don't have to chase after them because we are in you. We are your children. We are the sons of God. For this we want to praise you, worship you, bless your holy name, Lord. And we bring everything to your, to your hands, Lord. We put everything, all our problems, every, uh, pro every strife, everything into your hands, Lord God. Because we know you answer all our prayers. And we thank you, Father, that your grace never leaves us. Your grace is sufficient for everything. This we want to praise you and thank you, Lord. What a friend we have in Jesus All our sins and griefs to bear What a privilege to get Everything to God in prayer Often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Every trials and Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We want to praise you. We want to bless your holy name. Everywhere in the word of God, it says to bless, bless his holy name because he's such a good God, such an awesome God, such a loving God, forgiving God, merciful God. We thank you and we praise you. We want to shout out your praises from the rooftop, Lord. We thank you that when we praise you, Lord God, the demons have to flee. They yes, cannot Lord. stand beside us, his children, when we praise him because demons know that when we praise him they are defeated they are under our feet because you have given us this authority yes lord we come against every sickness every uh, thing of poverty every depression everything that is not of your kingdom because your grace is sufficient for us and you are inside us lord we want to praise your holy name lord we yes, bless lord. your holy yes, name lord. lord every knee shall bow and every Thank tongue confess Jesus. that Thank you are god you are lord you are the holy of all holies. You are an awesome God. We bless your holy name, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
Lord, praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. King of kings, the Lord of lords, the prayer answering God, the loving God, the Savior of this world. We worship you. We bless your holy name, Lord. You are our Redeemer. You are our Sanctifier. You are our God. We love you. We adore you. We glorify you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, living God in us. We worship you. We praise your holy name, Lord. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Good evening, church. We just come to a time of intercession. Uh, we just go point by point, and then we'll pray the other things that we need to pray. Right now, let's pray for Pastor Baldev from Chhattisgarh. This area is under heavy persecution from the Staffton forces and Naxalites. So let's pray in tongues for him. Thank you. Father, let your kingdom advance in Chhattisgarh, Father. Let your kingdom advance. We pray for Pastor Baldev, Lord. Surround him with your angelic forces, Father God. We pray divine and we declare divine intervention from heaven, Lord, in the situation, Father. Supernatural intervention that they will see the glory of Jesus in this in this in this place, O God. We pray for Chhattisgarh, Lord, let your kingdom come in that place. Let the power of Jesus be manifested. Let your glory be manifested in Chhattisgarh. And we pray for Pastor Baldev, Lord, your grace, your strength to be in uh, covering him, Lord, that he will be strong and bold in the face of persecution, yes, Lord, Father, yes, Lord. that he will manifest your glory and your power despite the persecution, Father. We pray for the Naxalites and Saffron forces. Touch them, Father. Touch their hearts. May they see your power at work in their lives right now, Father. In Chhattisgarh, Lord. Meet with them. Let them know that you're a God who loves them, Lord. Let your love cover them, Lord. Let's pray for the central and state governments. The most important thing we need to see is the kingdom of God coming into our government. Let's pray for their salvation. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Father, for the central government, the state government, the chief minister, the prime minister, the president. Father, we know you're a loving God, and your desire is that all shall, all shall be saved. And we pray, touch them, touch them right now. Let the love of Jesus flow into our governments. Let it flow into these places of authority. Let the glory of Jesus be manifested in these central and state governments. Let the kingdom come in their midst, Lord. Surround them with godly counselors. Give them wisdom, give them wisdom, discernment, understanding to lead this nation. To lead the states, who are about seek her about who are about she car a lot about her about seeky under about or about seek her about who are about she car a lot about her about seeky under about seek her work mighty signs and wonders in their homes and their families and their lives or about she car about may they know you as a god of the, uh, the god who is their creator the living loving god who loves them who are about she car about seek her a lot about she care about 
Let righteousness, justice, and truth be birthed in our central government and state governments, Father God. Let your kingdom come in advance. We thank you for them. We pray a blessing upon them. Bless them, bless their families, and we declare your kingdom has arrived in their midst. We prophesy the kingdom of God upon our government and on our nation. We pray for our nation. Let the kingdom of God come in this nation. Bless our nation, Father. We declare your blessings. We declare your peace into our nation. We declare your justice, your righteousness, and truth. We decree it into our nation in the name of Jesus. Let your light shine bright and strong over this nation, Father, delivering India from darkness into light. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for India, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our nation. Many are seeing the light of your glory. Many are encountering your love and your salvation. We thank and praise you, Father that you love this nation, that you love and you care about this nation, and we bless our land in the name of Jesus. Let's pray for the Harvest Ministry Churches at Carmona, Shinshini, Savorde, and Margao. Thank you, Father. We pray for the churches, Harvest Ministries, the house churches, each one of them. Bless, bless, bless the work. Bless the work of the hands of uh, Pastor Amit and all those who are in these places. Let the glory flow, let the glory flow, let the power and the love of Jesus flow. <laughs> Let them be like cities set on that hill that shine brightly in these areas of Carmona, Shinshini, Savard, and Margo. Let the sick and the lost come into these whole churches and let there be a mighty work of the Holy Spirit in these places. We claim these whole villages for your kingdom, Lord, that every one of these villages shall be transformed. We declare it transformation that your kingdom is advanced. We declare that principalities and powers of darkness are being evicted from these places because your kingdom has come in these villages. It is being established in Carmona, Shinshini, Sabada, and Margo. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We declare that disciples are increasing. They are multiplying in these places. More and more coming into the kingdom, Lord. More and more are being trained. More and more are being equipped. We declare it. We declare your gospel is going in power and in truth in Jesus' name. We'll pray for the Harvest Ministry Church in Maharashtra, led by Sion, Avi Sion. Let's pray for the church in Maharashtra that Avi Sion is leading. Many churches that he's planted. Thank you, Father, for the work that you're doing in Maharashtra. Let there be a multiplication. Multiplication, we declare multiplication of house churches in Maharashtra, all across Maharashtra, Lord. Let the glory be seen all across this big state. Anoint Sion, Lord. Anoint Avi Sion. Continue to give him all that he needs. Let there be provision. Let there be provision and protection. Let the glory be seen. Let the glory of God be manifested. Let the supernatural be seen every day in these places. We pray for the mission work <coughs> at Karnataka and for Tim uh, that is working in Karnataka. Timothy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for Karnataka. Thank you for Timothy. Thank you, Hora Basik. We declare that the word that Tim has spread, Lord, that life is coming out. Life is coming from the gospel that he has preached and from the work that he's doing. It is coming alive in Jesus' name. Life, the life of the spirit. Hora Basik, where once it was barren, Lord, now the life of God is coming. And uh, we declare in Karnataka the kingdom is advancing. Hora Basik, 
the sick are being healed, the gospel is being preached, and the lost are being saved. Ho raba si kara la raba, shiki hara la raba si ki hende raba ko raba si kara ba ho raba. We pray for the mission work in Andhra Pradesh led by Kiran and uh, Prashanti. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you for the work they're doing. Ho raba si kara la raba ho raba si kara la raba si. The gospel is going in truth and in power, Lord. We thank you for Andhra Pradesh. Thank you that your kingdom has come there. We declare multiplication of house churches. Ho raba si kara raba si kara la raba kara raba si ki andar raba. Ho raba si kara la raba ho raba si kara la raba si ki hinde raba. Ho raba si kara la raba ho raba si kara la raba kara raba si ki ar raba si ki hinde raba. Thank you, Father. We pray for Prashanti, the wife of Kiran, who is pregnant and due one of these days. Pray for her protection, safe delivery. Thank you, Lord. We declare your protection upon Prashanti. Thank you, Father, that she will have a safe delivery. Thank you. Everything will go well in Jesus' name. We declare it. We protect <coughs> your protection is upon her. Thank you, Lord. Horabasi, they are kept by your mighty power, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Horabasi, Horabashi, Let's pray for other ministries, churches, leaders, and pastors in Goa and in the rest of the country. We need to see the kingdom of God advancing in every part of this nation. Let's bless all the churches and pastors in this nation and the work they do. Thank you, Father. Bless, bless the pastors and the churches. Let them come alive. Breathe your Holy Spirit. Breathe your Holy Spirit over these churches and the work that they do. Let your kingdom come in every part of the nation. We bless the churches. We speak the life of the Spirit over these churches. Let your kingdom come, let your kingdom come and flow into every part, into every part of this nation. Let there be signs and wonders. Let the glory of Jesus be seen in every part of this nation as your church rises up to participate with you jointly in the work that you're doing in this nation. We speak life and health and peace into these work, into these churches and pastors and leaders all over this nation. We speak your protection. We speak your victory over them. Thank you, Jesus. The good work that you've begun in every church, you are taking it into completion, Father. Bless them, Lord. Give them great vision. Vision for their states, vision for the nation. We'll be having a Thanksgiving service on 31st of December. Let's just speak over that service. Thank you, Father. It's a, big, it's a big deal for us to have this 31st service because, I mean, everybody welcomes the new year. But what we want to do is we want to thank God for the year that's passed and welcome the new year. Okay, And so this service is very special because we're going to get in all these people that y'all have been praying for, right? Y'all have been interceding for so many days. Every Sunday y'all have been coming here before the meeting starts, Sister May has been there, Avinash has been there, you all have been there interceding for different things, different things over the state that your revival may come, your revival may come, your revival is finally here. <laughs> okay, fine. So so I want, I, I want, so we're trying to arrange for transport very specially, so that's one of the points that we can pray for. Arrange for transport for all these people from Sawate, from Chinchini, from uh, Karmana, to arrange for transport for them so that they can come and go back safely since it's the 31st, there's a lot of, you know, uh, crowd and traffic jams and stuff like that, so they, that they will go, that there will be no problems for them. And also that everyone may get a chance to interact with each other, right? You'll get a chance to speak to them. You'll get a chance to ask them how they are doing, what do they like about things that are happening in their churches, and what's happening there, and what's happening here, and share with them and testify to, to the goodness and the mercy of God, testify to the glory of God. Right? So we want all that happening. We're so, so happy, okay? And we want to thank God for all of them, actually. Okay, so it's it's more like a celebration, okay, that we're going to have on, on 31st December, right? So let's just pray for the whole, I don't know where it will be. <laughs> That's another thing we've got to pray for. We've got to just make sure that there's a place that, because we won't be able to accommodate here, okay? So let's just pray, let's just pray right now. Thank you, Lord. Praise you. Glory to your Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 H
Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Glory to you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. You are the King of Kings, Lord. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Lord. Glorify your holy name, Lord. Thank you. We declare your peace over this. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Peace over this happening, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We just, one last point, we'll pray for the judiciary of our nation. Yes, Just please. bless them. We must see justice, righteousness, and Amen. truth Amen. established in this nation, and it's for the judiciary Amen. as we pray for them. Thank, thank you, Father. We thank you for the judiciary. We bless them, Lord, with wisdom, with understanding, counsel, Lord, with right judgment. Cleanse, cleanse of all wickedness, cleanse the judiciary of all corruption and wickedness. We uproot it in the name of Jesus. We speak your righteousness into our, into our judiciary, that they will stand for right. Righteousness and truth and justice. Thank you, True justice will come to them. Lord, bless the Chief Justice of India, Lord. Guide yes, him Lord. as he makes his yes, decisions yes, and every one of yes, them. Lord. Yes, we Lord. bless yes, them Lord. in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. Wisdom, wisdom, Lord. Yes, wisdom and thanks. peace, Lord. Boldness as well. Yes, Father, we also pray for their protection, Lord. Yes, we pray, Lord, Lord protect each yes, and every Lord. one of yes, them. Lord. Especially when yeah, they stand yeah. for righteous yes, judgments. Lord, yes, we pray Lord. for divine protect protection lives, over them, Lord. Here God, keep them. Thank, Thank, you, Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Let's also, um, let's also pray for Chennai as they have <coughs> been battered by a storm. storm. It's just so sad because whenever the rest of the country just celebrates the season time, Chennai just always has mm -hmm. some rains or the other because yeah, the so southeast or monsoons that come there. So let's just pray for them, let's for pray all the Chennai. persons who stay there. And there's another place that there was a storm, I believe. Um, Bengal? Or Africa or South Africa? Yeah. South Africa. South Africa, okay. Let's pray. Let's just pray for them. And the storm that still, is, the still storm is there stops is now. Flood borders is still received right now, now in, the name in of Jesus, Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We speak name. peace into Chennai. In we speak name. Peace. peace into South Africa. Peace. We declare restoration, protection, and rebuilding of these yes. nations and states. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Bless you. Pass it. Thank you. Good evening. It was some really nice old school worship. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Can we just thank the Lord for Oscar and Lynette? I think that was a nice time that we had. Yeah. Come on, let's just give a mighty clap offering to the Lord. Let's just thank him. Right. Also for Sister May, she was one of the persons who reminded me that we need to have intercession every Sunday. And that's how we're having this intercession, actually. So... If the church is not going to stand in the gap, then no one will. You've got to understand that. If the church won't stand in the gap, then no one will. Okay? We can't keep complaining about the roads being bad, about the government being bad, and not say anything, not pray anything for them. Right? If the church is not going to stand in the gap, no one will. I just want to know, the last teaching that we did in Genesis, was it about Cain and Abel? Was it about the blood of Jesus? It was a long time back.
that's that's it, right? That was the last thing. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go into something that's very exciting. I, I want you to know that these teachings that we are doing, uh, now the last two Sundays the teachings were not part of the training track as such, but everything else previous to that, uh, before I was on the break and even now, uh, is to do with the training track that is going on in all the other churches that we're having in Carmona, in Chinchini, uh, in Savode. It's the same stuff that we're teaching all of those places and we want you all also for many of you already know it. For many of you, it's uh, it's just a revisiting, a refresher. For many of you, you don't know about these things. And we want to go through this because everyone should understand the meanings of certain key terms that are used in the New Testament. I mean, we just use terms blindly, right? Things like anointing, things like grace, mercy, baptism. We just use these terms. We don't understand what it is and what it really does. And the reason we don't understand it is because we've not looked at the Old Testament properly. Because we've either looked at the Old Testament, as I remind, uh, as I just remind you, we've looked at the New Old Testament from the eyes of from the eyes of judgment, from the eyes of religion, and because we've looked at it from those eyes, we are blinded. We can't really see the love of God in the Old Testament at that time. <clears throat> but when we come to the realization, when we come to the fullness of the realization, uh, and the faith in Christ, our eyes are opened up. And when our eyes are opened up, we really, really, really get to see. The love, mercy, and grace of Jesus Christ. The love, mercy, and grace of our Abba Father in the Old Covenant. And we look at it that he never changed. He was the same God. The same God of grace. The same God of mercy. Just his relationship changed. His relationship with those people was not one of father and child. And yet, <coughs> there are certain traits of the fatherly nature that we see there. And we see so much of Christ in here. <laughs> if once the veil is opened up, we see so much of Christ in here, so much of the shadow we understand. We understand the shadows. And then we understand the fulfillment better. Okay? So, so that's the aim behind doing these teachings. Okay? Fine? So let's go to Genesis chapter 5. Okay, Genesis chapter 5, there's a whole genealogy of Adam. Adam had Cain and Abel. Abel died. Cain was cursed. He had another son, Seth. Many people asked me, how did humankind progress? How did the population increase? If there was only one man and woman, and only they had children, then how did the population increase? Did brothers marry sisters? Well, yes, because at that time, there was no law against it, right? They did marry each other and there was it, it was fine because humanity had to progress, right? There had to be an increase in population, right? Now, that's basically what happened and scientists are increasingly finding out now that we all trace our roots back to one, uh, you know, pair of parents that have been there. So then there was Seth was the next son that was there. They had other daughters and other children, right? But there was Seth that was one of the most important ones there. And then from Seth comes the other people like Enosh and Mahalel and, uh, and, and, and Canaan and, and, and all of them, Jared. And then we come to verse 21. Verse 21. Genesis chapter 5, verse 21. And there we come to know about something. It's a Enoch lived 65 years and he begot Methuselah. Now, Methuselah, after he begot Methuselah, Enoch walked with God. Can you mark those terms? Walked with God. Can you mark that? Walked with God. 300 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years. Wow. Wow. 365 years. How old are you, Enoch? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday. And imagine his, ca I mean, imagine his cake, man, with 365 candles on there. Okay. <laughs> and Enoch walked with God again. Mark that. Walked with God. Very important term. We've misunderstood it. We've not understood what it means. So we're going to understand it today. And he was not. Suddenly... 
He was not. Okay? For God took him. Now, I want to get to something very important here. Okay? When a believer dies, when a Christian, somebody who believes in Jesus dies, what is the term that we usually use? Yeah, all that's there. But what is it? The Lord has called him home. Right? The Lord has called him home. And then we'll sing the famous song. Coming home, coming home, never more to roam. Right? Lord, I'm coming home. That's the song we usually sing. You've got to understand that that song was made by evangelists. Not for funerals, but for revival meetings. When the people of the world would come, unbelievers would come there, they would sing this song and say, come on, it's time to come home. Where is home? Where you really belong. Where do you really belong? With the Lord. Never more to roam in the darkness of the world, but come to Jesus. Here is where there is peace. Here is where there is satisfaction. You look for satisfaction from this vice and that vice and this addiction and that addiction. But all your satisfaction, pleasure, joy can be multiplied infinite times if you come to the pearl of greatest price, Jesus Christ. Come to him. This was what the song was about. It was not about anything else. It was about this. Okay? Now, Yet still we say, very, very often, very often, we will say, listen, this person has died. God has called him home. No, 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 no. You are home the moment you've come to Christ. That's your home. Home is where your heart is. You are home the moment you've come to Christ. Your spirit is united with the spirit of the Lord. You are united with God. You are seated with him in the heavenly places right now. If you just snap out and just put some special goggles, you will see that you are in heaven right now in the spirit, man. You are in heaven if you are a believer in Jesus Christ. If you're born again in Christ, you are in the heavenly places. You are seated there with him. Your spirit does not travel there later. You are there, already there. That's why you're called born again. Are you with me? Yes? Okay. And yet we say God took him. Right? Let me think about it. Most of our coffins will have the three letters. What are the three letters? Come on. What is R.I.P.? Come on. When did Jesus say about resting in peace? I mean, come on. He says, come to me, you who are weary, and I will give you what? Later after death or now? Now. He says, I give you my peace, my peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Peace that passes all understanding I give to you. When is that? After death or now? So the resting in peace is not after death. The resting in peace is now, now. Now we're supposed to have a rested nature inside of us. A rested mind. A rested being. We can do a lot of work out of rest. If we are going to do a lot of work and be restless, it means we don't know who our God is. We got to enter that rest and trust God. Amen? Amen? So, again, but here it says, God took Enoch. But for a believer and a born again Christian, God does not take you home. Do you get it? God does not call you back to him. He called you already and that's why you're with him the moment you've been baptized. The moment you've come, we're going to learn so much about baptism today. You are, the moment you're baptized, you're with the Lord. You're with him. You're united with him. He has wiped away your sin. He has wiped away everything. He's not taking you home later. He has taken you now if you put your faith in him. Isn't that amazing? Isn't it? But Enoch was living in a world that was wild. Enoch was living in a world that was full of sin. And so it says that God took him. Now took him how? His body, everything. He completely, body, soul just whoosh, went into heaven. 
went into God. Are you with me? If you just read this much, you will not understand anything. So you've got to read it from the eyes of the new covenant. And the best place to understand it is Hebrews 11. So go to Hebrews 11, please. Hebrews is in the New Testament, right? Hebrews. If you don't know where Hebrews is, just go straight to the book of Revelation. And then go backwards from the book of Revelation. You'll get Jude, you'll get three, you'll get three John, you'll get two John, one John, then you'll get Peter, and then after Peter, you'll get James. And then after James backwards, you'll get Hebrews. I go to Hebrews eleven. Hebrews chapter eleven, verse five. So what did Enoch do to make sure that he did not die? How did Enoch walk in such a way that he did not die? Look at what it says. Verse 5, what does it say? Can somebody read? Chapter 11, verse 5. No, 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 no. That's not the right way to read it. Read it very slow. Okay, so how was he taken away? Oh. So how did he live? But yes. How did he walk? Awesome. And he did not see death. So when I go about talking about immortality and telling people, see, listen, you can live forever till Christ comes again without dying. People think I'm crazy. But Enoch was in the old covenant. He had faith and he did not see death. You think you can't? You, you, you think it's, it's too difficult for you? After Christ has come? No, it's not. Jesus himself says you can live till he comes again if you want to. You can live till he comes again if you want to. We've got this idea that God has got a special clock, you know, a special clock for Oscar, a special clock for Lynette, a special clock for me, a special clock for Judith, a special clock for Ryan. And then the moment the alarm, beep, 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 beep. oh, Bonnie, time up. Come on. Let's cause something to happen. Let's make one cancer. Let's make one accident. Let's make something happen. Boom. Oh, that's coming home, coming. This is the crazy idea we have. What sort of a God is this? Why would God make us if he wanted to do this at the end of it? And, and what decides the clock? I mean, come on. What decides how, many, how much time Bonnie gets and how much time Oscar gets? What decides it? Random? Or their lives, the way they are doing things? But then is it a righteousness by works if it's based on what they do? So you see, death is a choice. That's why Paul says to live is Christ, to die is gain. But I do not know what to choose. Whether to live or to die. Remember, Paul was in jail. He had two centurions on either side. And he's writing that letter. He says, I don't know whether to live or to die. You know what? If I live, it will be beneficial for you. So casual, man. If I live, it will be beneficial for you. If I die, I'll be with the Lord. I don't know what to do. I think I'll choose to live. Can you be in jail with two centurions and a Roman guard all around you with, with spears and swords and, and the best armor possible of the time and make a choice of whether to live or die? Paul made a choice. In 2 Timothy, you know what he says? I think I'm done. I'm finished now. I've lived my life. I've finished the race. Now what awaits me is a crown of glory. You know what happens after he writes 2 Timothy? He dies. <laughs> Are you with me? Okay. If you look at Hebrews 11 again. By faith, what does he say? By faith, Enoch was taken away that he did not see death. And was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken... He had this testimony. Now, we know what it says in Genesis 5. What does it say in Genesis 5? Enoch walked with God. Doesn't it say that? Yes. But look at what it says in Hebrews 11. It says, 
This was the testimony that he pleased God. Can you mark that he pleased God? Okay, now tell me something. That means if Genesis 5 says walked with God and Hebrews 11 says pleased God, that means when Enoch walked with God, he pleased God, which means pleasing God means walking with God. And walking with God means to please God. So anywhere in the Old Testament, you find that phrase, he walked with God. It means he lived a life pleasing to God. Are you with me? Then the letter to the Hebrews, the Holy Spirit just defines what it means to please God. Look at this, look at this. He pleased God, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. Amen? Amen? So do you want to live a life pleasing to God? Do you want to live a life pleasing to God? Which do devotions are you going to say? Which prayers are you going to speak? How many psalms are you going to read and by heart? How many verses are you going to do? How much are you going to fast to please God? You can't do because the more you do, it's less, man. It's less. Why have the traditional Christian churches failed? Whether it's the Catholic, whether it's the Presbyterian, whether it's the Episcopalian, whether it's the Anglican, whether it's, whether it's any of the traditional mindset churches. Why have they failed? The reason they failed is because they've not got it. You can't do anything to please God. The more you do, the less it is because he is infinite, man. The only thing you can do is believe. And that's why he says here, without faith, it is impossible. So you can pray every day of your life. You can do a 21-day fast and prayer. But if you don't have faith in God, it is useless. Amen? Then we start looking at the faith part of things. Then we start curtailing down. We start toning down our Christian life. And we start saying, man, if it's just faith that is needed, then this is not needed. This is not needed. This is not needed. This is not needed. And then you realize, man, all that is needed is for me to walk like a son to a father. All that is needed is for me to walk like a son. That's it. That's all that is needed. Isn't that amazing? Amen. So Enoch, Walked. How did he walk? Now, he didn't have the Holy Spirit like you and I do. He was not born again. Jesus has still not died for his sins. But yet, look at what he says. He says that he who come, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. And he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So if you have diligently sought the Lord, you have found him. And then here is what he says. He pleased God. How did he please God? How did he please God? By faith. He pleased God by faith. He did not please God by anything else. He pleased God by faith. What did he do? He had faith. What did he do? Pleased God by faith. Okay, so what did he not do? He pleased God by what? By faith. That's how he walked with God. That's how God just worked out that miracle in his life. He was just not there. Just suddenly he disappeared. Suddenly he was not there. You know why he was not there? Because he walked in faith. Amen? Amen? Okay. Now, keeping all this in mind. Uh, by the way, do you know the oldest? The, the, um, who's the oldest person in the Bible? The person who lives the longest. What's his name? No man. His name is Jesus Christ. He's still alive. <laughs> and Portugal lost, Brazil lost, England lost. Thank God Jesus won, man. And we still have his victory 2,000 years and he has never lost and never will lose. Amen? Amen. The Ronaldos and the Messis may lose in this world, but Jesus Christ won. And he did it single-handedly. Without a 11-member team. Single-handedly. Amen? And that's why we can sit here and experience the joy of that salvation. Amen? Go to Genesis 6.
Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born to them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were beautiful and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. Now many people are confused about this particular verse because they're not sure who the sons of God are. There's one school of thought that says the sons of God were angels that had physical relationships with with, with human daughters, and then there were some weird things that happened out of that. Some people say the sons of God are the descendants of Seth, because Seth was the chosen one, the anointed one. The line of David came from Seth. The line of Jesus came from Seth. So it was all Seth, Abraham from Seth, everything from Seth. So Seth, the descendants of Seth committed, uh, you know, uh, sin basically by by having physical union with, with, with the descendants of, of Cain and all the others. and So there's a whole confusion and the Bible is silent about it. Like I always say, if the Bible is silent, leave it. Are you with me? If the Bible is silent about something, leave it, drop it. We don't need to get into debates, right? Let's go on. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not strive with man forever for, his in, for he is indeed flesh. Yet his days shall be 120. So God just curtailed the number of days. There were giants on the earth in those days. And also afterwards when the sons of God came into the daughters of men. There were children to them. And those were the mighty men who were of old. Men of renown. Then the Lord saw the wickedness of men was great in the earth. That every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So men, men's heart was evil and God saw that man was only doing evil. And man was continuously looking and doing evil. His thoughts were evil completely. Okay. Now, so the Lord said, I will destroy man whom, so uh, wait, we, we were in, we were in verse 6, right? And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on earth. Can you imagine this? Never in scripture do we find this sort of a passage. Where God was sorry that he made man. He felt bad for creating man in the first place. Can you imagine the amount of filth, the amount of sin that must have been there during those days. For God to really feel sorry that he has made man. We look at the sin nowadays and we feel bad for it. But imagine in those days. It was such an extent that God was sorry that he made man. Are you with me? Yes, we're going to get into something really exciting. And that every intent of the thoughts was evil. Okay. And he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. I will what? Both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air. For I am sorry that I have made them. Verse 8. But Noah found grace. In the eyes of God. Grace. Unmerited favor. Go, Noah. Not Goa. Noah found. <laughs> Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. We'll see why later. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man. Perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God. And Noah begot three sons. Shem. Ham. And Japheth. Remember those names. Because we're going to. We're going to look into it later. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Okay? Now that ham is not the ham you put for your bread. Okay? The earth was also corrupt before God. The earth was filled with violence. Remember, what was their corruption and violence? So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. Which flesh? All flesh. Everyone had corrupted their way on the earth. Am I right? Yes? Okay, now there's something we've got to understand here. The sin was to such an extent that man's whole life and everything on the earth was corrupted, which means everything was a mess. Do you understand? The birds were a mess. The animals were a mess. 
Everything was a mess. The environment was a mess, much like what we see today, but much worse than this, okay? Everything was a mess, 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 mess. Everything, man had corrupted himself, he had corrupted each other, there was violence, there was killings, there were everyone killing. In fact, anybody who was good that would survive in those days would risk death. Okay, are you with me? There was such a lot of filth on that, in that day, okay, in those days. Now, I want you, I want you to look a little ahead. And, Noah, and God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me. The end of all flesh has come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark. Cover it inside and outside with pitch. This is how you shall make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, width 50 cubits, height 30 cubits. If you do the math, you understand that most of shipping technology owes their, owes their uh, uh, knowledge and information to Noah because these dimensions in proportion is what is used till today. I mean, these are the proportions used to make sure a ship stays afloat. Okay? Fine. In fact, in, in Kentucky, in the U.S., they've, made, they've rebuilt an entire ark with these very dimensions. Okay? Fine. And you shall make a window for the ark and you shall finish it to the cubit from above and set a door on the ark in its side, and you shall make it with lower, second, and third decks. And behold, I myself am bringing flood waters on the earth to destroy from under heaven all flesh in which is the breath of life. Everything that is on the earth shall die. But I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall go into the ark, you, your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives with you. And every living thing of all flesh you shall bring two of every sort into the ark to keep them alive with you, they shall be male and female, birds after their kind, of animals after their kind, of creeping things in, of the earth after its kind. And many people are asking, how did so many animals fit on that one boat? Well, they did because they didn't go as adults into that boat. Use your brains. I mean, come on. How are you going to take so many animals otherwise? They didn't go as adults into that boat. <laughs> And you didn't need, like, for example, they didn't need a lion, a tiger, a panther, and a leopard to go. One of every kind, so it's one of every species. So one of the cats was enough. Are you with me? One of the big cats was enough. The rest would just automatically be formed through adaptation. Right? So one of every species. Right? And you shall take for yourself all the food that is eaten, you shall gather it to yourself, and it shall be food for you and for them. And Noah did according to all that God had commanded. I want you to pause here, and I want you again to go to that place which we always go. Which is the place that we go? Hebrews 11. So let's go to Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11:7. 11, Come on. By faith, Noah. <laughs> By faith, Noah. Being divinely warned of things not yet seen. What? How was he warned? Because he had what? Okay. How was he warned? Because he had what? Faith. Okay. So Noah was warned because of faith. Not just, he was a just man because he had faith. It means the whole world was filled with unbelief. That's why sin abounded, because there was unbelief. So much of unbelief all across the world. Are you with me? Yes? Okay. Look at what he says next. By faith Noah being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became an heir of righteousness, which is according to the faith. Which is according to faith. So he says, see, listen, 
by building the ark look at this he for the saving of his household by which he condemned the world and became an heir of righteousness he built the ark and through that ark he was trying to tell the world see listen you don't have an ark i got an ark come into the ark the ark represented jesus the ark represented the kingdom of god the ark represented everything else i mean today we can enter the ark the ark is the kingdom of god are you with me right okay fine now but that's not what i want to talk about think about this whole flood situation will you just think about it let's go back to adam did adam sin did adam sin how did he sin i told you what is the meaning of sin what would did he do what did he do what did he do he believed whose word he believed the devil's word he did not believe whose word he did not believe whose word did he believe so if he believed god's word if he believed satan's word then what did he have towards god's word unbelief so what is sin from that point onwards we saw romans 6 we said he became what he became a slave to satan right and from that point onwards the whole of humanity became like a slave to the enemy correct yes now is noah also a sinner because the word of god says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of god yes or no but amongst his generation amongst his people there noah was the best but in the, according to god's standard god was noah was still a sinner why because all have sinned all have fallen short every single one of them have fallen short of the glory of god there's not a single person that is not matching that, that is matching the standard of god are you with me so no i was also a sinner but amongst the other sinners he was one of the best because he had faith are you with me yes he had some sort of faith right and and so he was doing good stuff are you with me okay let's go ahead so here is noah my question to you is very simple think carefully why did god send the flood why there you go so my question is very simple was noah saved just by the ark or was noah actually saved by the flood the ark was there but what actually saved him it was it, it, what is the thing that saved him the flood <laughs> his faith yes but the flood listen we've been looking through the eyes of religion we've been looking from the eyes of the sinners who have been there on the earth and we've been looking from those eyes and listen who oh, flood whoosh, gone okay but instead of looking from those eyes i want you to look at it from the eyes of the just noah i want you to understand the kind of times he was in there was violence and corruption in those times noah was on the brink of absolute destruction if noah continued he would have been destroyed are you with me are you with me think about this could it just be that god sent the flood to save noah from the destruction of sin on the earth could it just be that we've been looking at only one side was the was the flood a judgment on the earth yes it was no doubt about it but was the judgment was that judgment of the flood was it salvation for noah yes it is 
So from what point of view do we look at it? If I'm a believer and born again Christian in Jesus Christ, I look at the flood and I see it as a shadow of salvation. What is the one act of salvation that we do the moment we believe? Baptism. What does baptism do? Wash away the filth of sin. What did the flood do? Wash away the filth of sin. Baptism, faith saves. The flood saved Noah. He was actually saved by faith. The flood wiped away the filth and the, and, and the sin from the earth. And then presented Noah with this new earth which he could inhabit and occupy. Are you with me? Are you with me? We've been looking at this wrong. Now you might say, Pastor, you, 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 Amit, you're just imagining it. That's not true. If that's true, that makes it such a loving God. Because these people were not going to change. They were filthy in their hearts and minds. No matter what, God must have tried, but they never changed. In fact, in fact, the word of God calls, calls Noah a preacher of righteousness, which means he properly preached. Now you're not called a preacher if you're not preaching. So Noah probably preached in those days. He probably told those people, come back, man. Stop your filth. And they didn't listen. So God was patient with them till the day was appointed where the flood would be sent to save Noah. Do you get it? If he didn't send the flood, Noah would not be saved. Noah's family would be destroyed. Noah would not be saved. Noah would be destroyed by the sin, the filth, the death and the destruction on the earth. You couldn't be good and survive in those days. To save Noah, God sent the flood. Now you might say, that, that, that's not true. Then turn with me, turn with me to 1 Peter 3. If you get this, brothers and sisters, you're just going to be so stunned at what God has done. So stunned, it's just going to be awesome. 1 Peter 3. Verse 20. 1 Peter 3, verse 20. Actually, you can go from verse 18. It says in verse 18. For Christ also suffered once. How many times did Christ suffer? Not every time. Not every time we break bread. He suffered once, 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 once and once alone. 2,000 years back. And that once was sufficient to do anything you have to do today. Okay? Christ suffered how many times? The just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit, by whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison, who were formerly disobedient, when once the divine long-suffering waited in the days of Noah. Did I tell you about this? I just told you about it, right? Okay. Look at what he says next. While the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is eight souls. I want you to mark the next few words, please. In which a few, that is eight souls, were saved through. Did you read that? Does it say it was saved through water or through the ark? So the flood was to save Noah? Noah? God sent the flood to save water. What a God do we have here? We've been looking at him upside down. It says that they were saved through the flood. The filth was judged through the flood, but Noah was saved through the flood. Your old man is judged through the flood and destroyed and finished off and buried, but the new man is made alive. Through the flood of baptism. Don't believe me. Look at what the word of God says next. There is also an antitype. Antitype means a, a, a role model or a, or a, or a symbol or, or a foreshadow of something. Okay. There is also an antitype which saves us now. That is baptism. Not from the removal of the filth of the flesh. That means of people. But the answer of a good conscience towards God. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ 
who has gone to heaven and is at the right hand of I mean, come on, this is just so amazing. You look at the Noah flood of Noah and you get all scared. Oh, da, 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 the flood, flood, flood. And what happened at that time? And what would happen? And you look at the flood of Noah now and you say, oh my goodness. Noah was the believer back then. And God saved him by sending the flood. Had the flood not come, Noah would not be safe. Noah was saved through the flood. God sent the flood purposely to save Noah. And he made sure an ark was prepared so, God, so Noah does not get destroyed with the flood. Are you with me? Because Noah also was a sinner. But Noah was better than the rest. So Noah had to be saved from the flood also in that sense. So there was an ark. Our ark is Jesus Christ. Jesus died on our behalf. Are you with me? Are you with me? But those who don't believe are condemned already, says the word. Condemned already. Go to 2 Peter. 2 Peter, the second letter of Peter. 2 Peter 2. To Peter 2 5. And did not spare the ancient world, but saved Noah, one of eight people, a preacher of righteousness. Bringing in the flood and the ungodly. Are you, are you listening to this? He says, he says that he saved Noah by bringing in the flood. Are you listening? God saved Noah by bringing the flood. The flood was a salvation flood. The flood was not a judgment flood for Noah. The flood was a salvation flood for Noah. It was to save Noah. It was not to judge Noah. It was to save Noah from the filth. Because if Noah continued on the earth, he would be destroyed, brothers and sisters. So God sent the flood to save him. Isn't that amazing? That's why Peter says the flood is an anti-type of baptism. The flood represents baptism. The flood is a type of baptism. That flood of Noah was a type of baptism. Because what baptism does is the same thing that the flood did. That flood wiped out people. This baptism wiped, uh, wipes off the, the dead works. Wipes off the, the dead conscience and makes your conscience alive again. Gives you a new conscience. Are you with me? Makes your spirit alive again. Are you with me? Yes or no? Okay. Let us go ahead. Now, um, you remember what he did? Go back to Genesis 6. Genesis 6, verse 20, after the flood was over, everything was finished. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took of every clean animal and of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. Verse 21 of Genesis, sorry, Genesis 8. Genesis 8, verse 20. Huh? But in Genesis 8, verse 20. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and, the, and took of every clean animal, of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings to the altar. On the altar, and the Lord smelled a soothing aroma. Then the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake. Are you listening? Although the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth, nor will I destroy every living thing as I have done. So please don't look at floods that are happening in this place and that place and see God promised. No, no, no. He says, I will never send a flood myself. I will never send a flood that covers the whole earth and destroys every living thing. That sort of a flood has never come. God, thank God for that. Okay? That sort of a flood has never come. How do I know that? No, because we're alive, man. <laughs> okay? That sort, of, that sort of a flood has never come. Okay? Fine, that, 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 that stray dog that comes and drops my sandals at home is still alive there. Okay? Fine? The, those trees that were there in, our, in, 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 in your aunties or your uncles or your grandfather's property is still there, there, right? That sort of a flood has never come. You are still alive. That sort of a flood has never come. God has kept his promise. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? 
God promised Noah, he says, I will never going to send a worldwide judgment on everybody and every living thing. Never ever going to send it. Do you believe that? Are you sure? Why does your end times doctrine not support it though? Let me ask you another question. What is the sign that he gave? Are you sure? Do, do, do you look at the rainbow? When you see the rainbow, do you remember this promise of God? From the time we were kids, we've heard of this story, we've heard of it, right? We, we remember it. That rainbow was a sign. That rainbow was a sign. That rainbow was a sign that God put in the... Do you, do you look at it as a sign? Is it promise sure? Do you see God destroying the whole world all in one shot with one water of destruction? Do you see it happening? Has it happened right now? Are you sure? Are you sure? Okay, now listen to me. I want you to turn to Isaiah 54. Hold on, huh? don't, don't just jump at my statement. Don't say, what is this he's preaching? Just hold on, hold on. Everything's going to be brought to light. Isaiah 54. Lord, I thank you. I thank you because you're so awesome. But what we're going to learn, but what these brothers and sisters are going to hear today, this is awesome. Listen, listen, listen carefully. Israel was called the wife of God. Isaiah 54. Israel was called the bride of God. Are you with me? The wife of the Lord, right? Now, the moment Israel broke covenant in the desert itself, they broke covenant and then after that repeatedly disobeyed God. God says through one of the prophets, he says, divorce her. Right? And then he says, the one who has never had anything, I'm going to take as my wife. The one who's been filled with filth, I'm going to take as my wife. The one who's been filled with filth, I'm going to take as my wife. Right? Right? That is what we find out here. Isaiah 54. Who was the bride? Israel was the bride. Who was the one who had no children? The widow, the, the left aside, the abandoned? The Gentiles. The rest of the world. The Gentiles. Are you with me? Listen to this. Sing, O barren. You who have not born. You know who he's talking about? He's talking about you. He's talking about you. Sing. Oh, Oscar, sing, O Lynette, sing, O Vrinda, sing, 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 Avinash, sing, May, sing, Bonnie, sing, Judith, sing, Amit, sing, Ryan, sing, 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 come on, sing. Okay, fine. You who have not born, break forth into singing, cry aloud. You have not labored with child because you've not been the wife of God. You've not been the bride of God. You've not been the bride of his son. You have not been having that relationship, that intimacy, but sing now, sing with joy. For more are the children of the desolate. Who was the desolate? The Gentiles. Separated from God. In absolute darkness. Away from God completely. They were the desolate. Right? We were the desolate. And he says, more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married woman. Is that true today? Yes, it is. The church was the desolate. And it has now become the wife. Are you with me? Yes? Okay. Enlarge the place of your tent. He's prophesying. He's prophesying about the church. He's prophesying about what's going to happen to the church. He says, see, listen, you Gentiles, you never knew who God was. You were in sin. You were in filth. I'm telling you, enlarge your tent now. If you are going to become my bride, so enlarge your tent. Stretch out the curtains of your dwelling. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes because I'm going to give you abundance, man. I'm just going to expand. You're going to expand. You're going to expand. You're going to expand. You're going to expand. The moment you become my bride, you're going to expand. Your business is going to expand. Your family is going to expand. Your prosperity is going to expand. Your finances is going to expand. Your health is going to expand. You're going to just expand, expand, expand. Are you with me? For you shall expand. There it's go. To the le right, to the left, your descendants will inherit the nations and make desolate cities inhabited. Verse 4. Do not fear. Can you say do not fear? Can you say I'm not going to fear? Can you say it out loud? I'm not going to fear. 
Come on, everyone, whether you're a kid or you're an adult, you will say it out loud. I'm not going to fear. Everyone, come on, say it. I'm not going to fear. Come on, come on, come on. Even the kids say it. I'm not going to fear. I'm not going to fear. Say, I'm not going to fear. I'm not going to fear. I'm not going to fear. Okay, then look what he says next after that. What does he say next? Same verse. For you will not be what? You will not be what? Because you're the married woman now. Amen? So you will stand before that cancer patient and you will not be ashamed when you say be healed. You will speak to that Gentile or, the, or that unbeliever who comes and tells you, where is your Jesus? Your Jesus is nowhere. Look at your life and you will speak and you will stand in faith and you will not be put to shame. And you will stand before a coffin of a dead person and you will say, come on, rise up and you will not be put to shame. And you will look at a person whose leg is cut and you will say, leg lengthen out and you will not be put to shame. And the whole world will be in economic crisis. And as they are in economic crisis, they will, they, will be, they will be saving and hoarding and hoarding up their wealth and hoarding up their wealth. But you will be the one who will be giving, 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 giving. And they will say, you're gone crazy. And you will say, listen, I will not be put to shame. Because the more I give, the more I get. I'm never going to be put to shame. Go ahead. Neither will you be disgraced. Neither will you be disgraced, for you will not be put to shame. You will not be what? You will not be disgraced, you will not be put to shame. Are you with me? Okay. For you will forget the shame of your youth. You will not remember the reproach of your widowhood anymore, for your maker is your husband. Is the church called the bride of Christ? So is he talking about the church? So he's telling the church, listen, he's telling you, you will not be put to. Come on, say, I will not be put to. I will not be put to. Shame, okay. I will not be disgraced. I will not be put to shame. Is it, is it too difficult to believe that my days will keep getting better and better and will never get worse? Doesn't the word of God say that the, the, the path of the righteous keeps getting brighter and brighter like the noonday sun? The Lord of hosts is his name, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. He is, the God, he is called the God of the whole earth. For the Lord has called you like a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit, like a youthful wife, and you were refused, says your God. For a mere moment I have forsaken you. Because we were Gentiles. God had not looked at us. He had forsaken us. He had kept us aside. The Canaanite woman, she was a Gentile. She comes and says, Jesus, Jesus, please heal my daughter. She's like, I don't give the food of children to the dogs. That was God's treatment to the Gentiles. That was God's treatment to all of us. You who come and say, oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and then shout out and say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. All that drama you can do now because of what Jesus has done. Before that, you were forsaken. You could cry out and scream out and all that God could look at you and say, dogs. Do you get it? Because you were desolate. You were forsaken. You were abandoned. You were not part of the covenant. Now you can come. Now the veil is torn. Now anybody can come and say, Lord, please. And he will listen. Are you with me? Let's go ahead. For a mere moment I have forsaken you, but with great mercies I will gather you. With little wrath I hid my face for you, from you for a moment. But with everlasting kindness, I will have mercy on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. For this is now. For this is like the. For this is like the. Waters of. Noah to me. Do you believe God will never send that kind of a flood again? Are you sure? Absolutely sure? Listen to this. For as I have sown. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah would no longer cover the earth. 
Mark these next few words in the Bible. As I have sown that the waters of Noah will no longer cover the earth, so have I sworn, I will never be angry with you. Wow. Are you listening? Who does he say that to? The one whom he calls his bride. The one to whom he says, I am your maker and your maker is your husband. Who is that? The bride of Christ. And to the bride of Christ, what does he say? I will never be angry with you nor rebuke you. Does it say that in your Bibles? Yes or no? I will not be angry with you nor rebuke you. Are you listening? God will never be angry with you nor rebuke you. I don't know about you, but I just feel like just standing up and just thanking and praising God and say, Lord, I thank you. That is such a privilege to never come on your angry side, man. He says, I will never be angry with you. Like I swore. You know what he swore? Go back to Genesis 6. He says, I know the imaginations of man's heart are evil and wicked, but still I promise I will never. I know that the church will do nonsense. I know that there are Christians who will mess up. I know there will be mistakes, but I will never be angry with you, nor rebuke you. Does it say that in your Bibles? Can you just say thank you, Lord? Can we just thank the Lord for this? Come on, let's just thank him, right? To get a written assurance, man, to get a written assurance of all that we have been preaching, to get a written assurance and show those religious Pharisees to their faces and tell them, listen, this is what the word of God says. He will never be angry nor rebuke us. Verse 10, just in case you're not convinced. For the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed. But my kindness will not depart from you. Nor shall my covenant of peace be removed from you. Says the Lord who has mercy on you. My kindness shall never depart. You who think that you need to pray fast and earn God's kindness. He says it will never depart. You only have to belong to the church. Do you know what Paul says to one of the people who had, who had committed some grievous sin? You know what he says? The person sleeps with his own mother in 1 Corinthians. And, 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 and when he sleeps with his own mother, you know what he tells, you know what he tells them? They had, they, 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 had, they had, the person not repented and it was continuously happening. And so you know what they told him? He told them, let him not attend the meetings. That's what he says there. Are you with me? Do you understand? Does it make sense to you right now? I mean, right now if I tell somebody not to attend the meeting, some people will be all too glad not to attend the meeting. Do you know what it means? It means not to be part of, do you know how much they would fight to get into to be part of the church? Because they understood the moment you're in church, he will never rebuke you nor be angry with you. The moment you're part of the body of Christ. Never ever. Isn't that a consolation for you? Can't you just go in peace and say, Lord, thank you. Now, yes, you can take advantage of that and do all sorts of nonsense if you want to. Or you can just humble yourself and like, man, this is just too good. Just too good. Look at what he says next. Oh, you afflicted one. Who was the afflicted? O oh, afflicted one, tossed with a tempest and not comforted. Now many people quote this and say, you see, if you're part of the church, you're going to be afflicted. No, no, that's not what it is. You were the afflicted, tossed in the tempest before you became the church. Now that you are the church, look at what he says. I will lay your stones with colorful gems. 
And I will lay a foundation with sapphires. You know how strong a sapphire is? You know how strong these colorful gems are? They're all made under pressure, so their strength is immense. He says, I'm going to make that your foundation. Look at what he says next. I will make your pinnacles of rubies, your gates of crystal, your walls of precious stone. Come on. What has pinnacles, walls, and gates and a foundation? A normal house? No. What has pinnacles, walls, and gates? A temple. Who is the temple of the living God? You. You. You are no longer tossed in the tempest, afflicted one. No, you are the temple, rooted, firmly founded with colorful gemstones, man. Your children shall all be taught by the Lord. Who is your children? Not our children. Your children means everyone who comes as a fruit of the gospel, who's part of the church. Everyone who's part of the church, whether it's small or big. You shall be what? Didn't Jesus say that? I will send my Holy Spirit and he will teach you all things. It's not Amit Kenny teaching you, man. Neither is it Avinash when he preaches or Tim when he preaches or Kiran when he preaches or, or Sion when he preaches or anybody else when he preaches. No, 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 no. It's the Holy Spirit. Get, get, get your priorities right. Understand who is the one you're supposed to be indebted to. It's the Holy Spirit you're supposed to be indebted to. If he didn't have your back, you would not have a teacher to teach you. He wanted to teach you. He got a hold of you because you wanted to get a hold of him. Go on. Great shall be the peace of your children. Come on, can you say great is my peace? Who thought, I mean, who thought the floods of Noah would take us so far? Can you say great is my peace? Come on, great is my peace. In righteousness you shall be established. Look, 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 <laughs> look at this, look at this, okay, look at this. I want you to mark from 13, actually, actually from, from 11 onwards, okay. I want you to just mark it and remember it and just remind me, remind me, okay, just to tell you something, okay. Can you do that? Yes, remind me to tell you something, okay. Fine. In righteousness you shall be established. You shall be far from oppression. What? What? Who does he say that to? So he says the church will be far from oppression. He's not talking about persecution. He's talking about oppression. That means oppression should not even be near you. Am I right? That means when you run in one place, oppression runs far away from you. That's what he's trying to say. Okay, go on. He says, for you shall not fear. And from terror for it shall not come near you. So oppression and terror is not supposed to come near you if you are in the church. If you are part of the body of Christ, oppression and terror is not supposed to come near you. It's supposed to go far away from you. It's like oil and water. It's like two, two magnets of the like poles. The moment you bring north pole of one magnet and north pole of the other magnet, they will repel, 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 repel. That's how it's supposed to be for you, man. You come to a place, oppression whoosh, goes away. You come to another place, oppression goes away. Hey, Ryan, you're that believer guy. Now just come here. There's lots of evil, de demonic attacks. Just come here. If you just come here, it will go away. I mean, that's the sort of stuff I'm talking about. You should be invited into marketplaces when the economy crashes, man. People should invite you. Oh, come on, come on. We are in Ghana here. The economy's crashed so badly. May, can you please come here? You just land, wait for five minutes, economy comes back up, and then you go back. Why? Because oppression runs away from me. Oppression runs away from me. Oppression runs away from you. Indeed, they shall surely assemble. I love this one. Assemble means come against you. They shall gather against you. They shall make their forces Unite against you. Mark my words. Look at this. He says, indeed, they shall surely assemble, but not because of me. And means those stupid attacks that you keep facing and you say, oh, that's an attack. Maybe the Lord has allowed this because he wants me to learn something. It says here in the Bible, it says, not because of me. It means I have not sent those things. 
Listen, we are not just preaching from our head, man. We are preaching from what the word says here. We've been screaming our lungs out to Christians for so long. It's here, it's here. We're not just talking from our head. It's here in the word. You know what it says here? It says, they shall assemble against you, but not because of me. For whoever assembles, whoever assembles against you shall fall for your sake. So they shall come against you, but even if they come against you, they will fall. If they come against you, they've not come because of me. If they've come against you, they've not come because of me. If they've come against you, they've not come because of me. But if they do come against you, they will fall. If they've come against you, they've not come because of me. If that COVID or anything has come against you, not come because of me. But if they do come against you, they will fall. Amen? Amen? Go on, go on. Behold, I have created the blacksmith who blows coals in the fire. Who brings forth an instrument for his work. Okay. <clears throat> Behold, I've created a blacksmith who blows coals in the fire, who brings forth an instrument for his work. That the, uh, and I've created the spoiler to destroy, verse 17. But no weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue which rises against you in judgment what's going to happen you shall condemn whose job is it to condemn so when satan raises up his tongue and tries to say you're good for nothing you're a scared person you're this you're that whose right is it to condemn Then he says something which we've ignored. We like to say no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper, but we forget the last line there. This is the what? Can you mark that? Can you go back to Ephesians 1? You know what he says in Ephesians 1? He says that your eyes of your enlightenment may be opened, that your eyes of your understanding may be opened, that you may understand what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance, his heritage in the saints. For there has been one, uh, in the letter to Peter says, there has been a heritage and inheritance that has been kept aside, specially for you, guarded, reserved for the day of redemption, for you. What is that heritage? Look, the whole of Isaiah 54, that's your heritage. What's your heritage? This is your heritage. You will have a foundation that is so strong that you will not be shaken. What's your heritage? That your children will be taught by the Lord. What's your heritage? Terror and oppression will be far away from you. What's your heritage? No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. What's your heritage? They will, not, they will assemble against you. They will come against you, but not because of God. What's your heritage? If they come against you, they will fall. What's your heritage? God will never be angry with you nor rebuke you. What's your heritage? That you will get a chance to condemn those tongues. What's your heritage? That you will not fear and you will not be put to shame. What's your heritage? That you will not be disgraced. That's your heritage, man. Claim it, take it, and take it by force. Amen? Flood waters of Noah. <laughs> There's another place you've got to go. I mentioned something about end times, didn't I? Why did I open my mouth? Go to Matthew 24. Verse 37. Verse 36 first. Matthew 24, 36. Matthew 24, 36. I love this. Are you ready? I love to quote Matthew 24, 36 because everyone claims to know the day when Jesus will come again. They knew it in 2012. 
They knew it in 2020. They knew it in 1999. <laughs> they knew it in the year 2000. But Matthew 24, 36 says, Of that day and hour, no one knows. But my Father in heaven. I, I need you to understand something. I'm not, I'm not really talking about the end times doctrine, but a lot of Matthew 24 is talking about what happened in the year 70 AD when the Romans destroyed Jerusalem and destroyed. There was a prophecy about that. And in between, Jesus switches to that and says, pray that that day, because the abomination of desolation is going to come in the courtyard of the temple. That is the Roman flag of the eagle that was a pagan symbol of a pagan god that was brought during that time. The temple gates were broken open, if you look at historical records, and Caesar took his armies and everything, went straight into the inner court and went straight into the Holy of Holies with that big thing. Okay? With that big banner of the eagle and everything. It was placed there, and then the whole temple and everything was destroyed, and people were put inside, stuffed inside, almost 3,000, 4,000 Jews were stuffed inside. The whole thing was destroyed and burnt. That's why till today there's one wall that remains and it's called the Veiling Wall. People go and cry there in remembrance of what happened that time. Are you with me? Yes? The reason that the British had control over Israel was because Britain comes from Rome. The Roman Empire divided, subdivided, subdivided, divided, divided, divided and then formed Britannica and that's how. Okay? Fine, that's, that's the background history. <clears throat> of that day now, no one knows, uh, not even the angels, but my father only. Verse 37. As the days of Noah were. I love this. As the days of Noah were. Uh, come on, let's go back to the days of Noah, shall we? What was happening in the days of Noah? Sin was rampant. Right? Sin rampant now? Who was taken away? No, 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 no. The days of Noah. We're talking about the days of Noah. Who was taken away by the flood? Was Noah taken away by the flood? Or were the ungodly taken away by the flood? Was the flood a judgment on Noah? So if the flood was a judgment on the ungodly, so then was the ungodly wiped away? Were they taken away? Suddenly? Without warning? Yes or no? Do you know every doctrine of rapture preaches something that's contrary to what scripture says? Most of the doctrines of rapture preach a doctrine that says that there'll be a day where suddenly people will be taken, 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 taken. That the believers will just be taken suddenly, 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 suddenly. And suddenly the believers won't be there and they have been raptured. But listen to what scripture says. Listen to this. As with the days of Noah, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. And they did not know until the flood came and took them all away. Who did the flood take away? The ungodly. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Now read it in context. Then two men will be in the field. One will be left. One will be taken. One will be left. Who's the one who's left? The godly or the ungodly? And who's the one who's taken away? The godly or the ungodly? Oh. Two women will be grinding in the mill. One will be taken. One the other will be left. Who's the one who's taken away? Who's the one who's left? Now, 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 don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that taken away happens through death. I'm saying that there'll be a day where God will bring his judgment that will just come like a flood. Not a flood, not the flood, but it will come like, like a flood. Okay, not a flood as such, but his judgment will just come in such a way that everything that belongs to the kingdom of darkness will just be away. But what happened to Noah? Think about it. He says, as the days of Noah, what happened to Noah? Noah went into the ark, right? Right? What are you baptized into? The name of Jesus, right? That's your ark, right? You're where? In the name of Jesus. If you're in the name of Jesus, you're safe, right? Okay. When the flood waters came, because they were in the ark, they were lifted up above the destruction. Yes or no? 
Yes or no? Yes? A little bit up above the destruction. Correct? Right? Okay. That's what's going to happen. Are you in the name of Jesus? Are you baptized in the name of Jesus? So if you're baptized in the name of Jesus, you're going to be just lifted up above the destruction. Destruction come. Whoosh, and then you'll be brought down to rest on the mount probably. Whoosh, come down in a new heaven and a new earth. And you're going to occupy. And Christ and all the others who've gone, died with him. And, 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 and uh, are in spirit with him are going to then have their bodies also restored. And all of us together with new bodies occupy a new heaven and a new earth. Now that's the real rapture. Not the kind of stuff that Hollywood shows in these movies called Left Behind. Where suddenly, gone, 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 gone. Suddenly, I don't know, you've seen those movies? I mean, suddenly somebody, just a pile of clothes there. Somebody, just a pile of clothes there. Somebody, just a pile of clothes there. No, 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 no. The ones who will be taken away by the judgment of that day will be the ungodly, not the godly. The wicked, not the godly. Those who are in the name of Jesus are in the ark. They are fine. Are you in the name of Jesus? You're in the ark. Amen? Guess why the judgment is being sent? To save you. Watch therefore for you do not know the hour when the Lord is coming. Go on. Go to Luke. Luke 17. Twenty-six. And as it was in the days of Noah, so will it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married, they gave in marriage. Now many people see, 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 see in the end times everyone is getting married and given marriage. So we're not supposed to get married. What rubbish. He never says not to get married. He says, he says people will be busy, occupied with their minds on earthly stuff and not on the kingdom of God. Are you with me? Until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all, took them all away. Likewise, also, it was in the days of Lot. They ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so, it will be there on the Son of Man when the Son of Man is revealed. Are you with me? Yes or no? <laughs> Everything is a shadow in the old covenant. Everything. You're gonna look, if you're going to look at just one side of the judgment, you're looking at it from the different point of view. You're looking at it from the point of view of the ungodly. You're looking at it from the point of view of the ungodly. If you need to look from the point of view of the godly, the believer in Christ, the Christian, then you will know something. The flood came to save you. Just like the flood is the baptism. Baptism cleanses. The flood cleansed the earth of all the filth. The baptism cleansed me of all the filth. Amen? And just like God promised, he will never be angry with you. He will never rebuke you. He's always with you. He's not against you. Amen? And we learn a third lesson about the end times. What about the end times? Yes, there's a judgment day coming. No doubt about it. But the judgment day is not about... Listen, the point is not about the judgment day coming. The point is about being saved. Not from judgment. From the destruction that sin causes. Do you understand? So the judgment is the flood to save the, save the believers. Are, are you getting this or not? I mean, God wants a time where the believers will no longer want and need to do spiritual warfare. Amen? Amen? Where you will just be walking in absolute peace. Okay? You have that peace already. You have a taste of that life already. And you can continue in that life. But when that day comes, when the Son of Man comes... 
It's not going to come. It's not going to come like in stages. Oh, now is this. People ask me, are you pre-tribulation? Are you mid-tribulation? Are you a-tribulation? Are you this? Are you that? Are you pre, uh, pre that? I, I'm not a theologian, so I don't know all those terms. Is the tribulation going to come first? Is it going to come afterwards? Is it going to be no tribulation? Or is it going to come before? Or is it going to be in the tribulation that we are there? When is the kingdom going to come? I just believe this much that the kingdom is already here. Because we are the kingdom. The more we enforce the kingdom, the more we are hastening the coming of the Lord. Okay? I know another thing. When the tribulation will come, how the tribulation will be, I have no clue. And frankly, I don't care. You know why? Because it's anyways going to happen with the blinking of an eye. And it's done. I know one thing, I'm on the right side. <laughs> right? Right? What's the right side? God's side. Amen? That's it. Can we just thank the Lord? Come on, let's just thank the Lord and get ready for the breaking of bread. Let's just thank the Lord. Come on. Thank you, Father. Yeah, I already said, heritage, heritage. We're going to have Ryan with us. He's going to... Lead us into the breaking of bread. We're passing the offering box around. And we are also having the QR code that will appear at the end of this video. If any of you want to give an offering, you can give it through the QR code that's going to appear at the end. Otherwise, you can put cash in the box that's here. Thank you. Let's just get up for the breaking of bread. Even as we're getting ready for the breaking of bread and as, as the offering is also happening, let me just take a song. Let's just Lord. You are good all the time, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. If you're walking through the valley, there are shadows all around. Do not fear. He is with you. He will keep you safe and sound. He has promised to never leave you, nor forsake you. And his word is true. God is good.
praise you, Lord. Glory to you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's have the breaking of bread right now. As we break uh, bread, we remember what the Lord has done for each one of us. We remember that he, his body was bruised, the entire chastisement which was due for us, for each one of us, he bore it upon himself. All the bruise, his body was so badly bruised, his face was marred. The Bible says that he was unrecognizable. His visage could not be recognized. His face was so marred. All for each one of us. Because of the sin that we had carried. What was on us. For the wages of sin was death. And that death he bore, he was the substitute. Let's remember that, that he bore it on our behalf, on each one of us. You and I were supposed to be on that cross. The wages of sin, we were supposed to carry it, he bore it. And when he did that, he took it completely. And with that remembrance, let us declare this. That by his stripes, I was completely healed. By his stripes, I was made whole. By his stripes, every sickness, every disease was healed. I, I am walking in perfect health. Now. Every weakness in my body leaves now. Strength comes to my body now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you. So as we share this wine, let's remember that the Lord, he bled. And the Bible says that he bled for our sins. Our sins were taken on him. And the blood of Christ redeems us from every sin. The blood of Christ continually cleanses us from all sin. All our past sins have been forgiven and he does not remember them anymore. Thank you, Lord. As we share in this wine, let's remember and declare that through his blood, I have been redeemed. Through his blood, I have been made justified. 
just as if I have never sinned anymore. Through his blood, I have been made righteous. Through his blood, I have been accepted in the beloved. And he does not remember my sins anymore. Thank you, Lord. Okay, I think that was, that was really beautiful. Can we just um, first thank the Lord for Ryan, can we? Come on, can we just thank the Lord for Ryan? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and can we stretch our hands towards, not only towards Ryan, towards Oscar, Lynette, uh, May, and everyone who's led anything today. Uh, Oscar, Lynette led a beautiful time of praise and worship today. Uh, May was with the intercession. And Ryan was here breaking a bread. Can we just 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 pray in tongues to speak over each other's lives? Just Rebe Kehira Basahara Lava Sahana Mashia. We speak over their health, we speak over their finances. We say perfect health, perfect finances. Now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Okay, before we leave, a few announcements. Remember. 24th December, Christmas Eve, we are not having any service this time, okay? But we will have a service on 25th December, Christmas Day, okay? Afternoon, don't worry, afternoon. So those of you who will be um, sleeping because you'll have gone for a <laughs> midnight dance, you can, you can come on 25th December, afternoon, 4 o'clock, we'll finish early, we'll finish soon, I know you'll need... Or do you all want to not have the service on Christmas Day? 25th. Yeah, we can go for the outreach that day. Let's just meet up here and then move from here. Can we have the outreach on that day instead of the service? Yeah? Right? So we, we, we can all meet here first. We can meet here. And then we'll move from here. Is that okay? Yes? Okay. Anyways, I'll, I'll send the message. I'll ask everyone also. I'll, I'll send the message on around before the 25th so that you all know. Okay? 31st December, Saturday, we are having the Thanksgiving service. It's not going to be midnight. It's going to be in the evening again. Four to six maximum. We are arranging for transport for people. So please, if you know anybody from, uh, you know, around Carmona, Chinchini, Savote, let them also come so that they can meet the others from there and they can, you know, encourage them to come for the meeting there, okay? So uh, 31st December, please keep it in prayer. We're going to thank the Lord. We're going to also prophesy over every person that's gathered here, prophesy for the new year, prophesy over the state, over the country for the new year. Thank the Lord for all the wonderful testimonies that have taken place. So... Uh, if you have uh, any testimonies, short ones, we're not going to have too much time for everyone to come and give a testimony, but a uh, short one, if you can, if you've got any big testimony that has happened this year, not necessarily for your life, but to people that you've ministered to very specially, okay, then, then please remember it. Let's remember those testimonies on 31st December, okay? Fine? Um, now, I don't want this going live. Hold on.
Fine? Done? Okay. God bless you. Take care. Have an awesome, awesome week ahead. Meet one another. Encourage one another. And then go. Okay? Thank you. Good night.